Well, I'm finally getting to the video that Backslasher wanted me to make. Initially, uh, he or she wanted me to talk about my dreams and what they meant, but it's very difficult since most of my dreams make the video for Army of Me by Bjork look tame and completely sane. Um, my dreams could be something like I'm driving along in the car and uh, I look at the dashboard to look at, you know, how fast I'm going and suddenly the entire reality is now something that revolves around that dashboard, you know? There's a city or the whole thing that looks like the display of the dashboard or not even a city, just an entire reality. <laughs> and, uh, and I could be continuing a discussion and now, uh, oops, well, look, now a score just, it, it, now there's a score in the corner of my view because it's a game now. Um, and when I go into the ho into some building in that game, well, now I'm in that building, now I'm in some bar, uh, DJing. It seems like I'm in Seattle or something, right? I'm in some bar doing DJing, using equipment I've never used before. And, uh, uh suddenly a, a discussion, I'll go into the, 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 I'll head towards the bathroom. And now I'm in the bathroom at, uh, Tyler's house. And, yeah, I mean, it just, it just, the reality changes over and over again, and it can be something that doesn't even make sense. I mean, there could be a reality about the, the lid of a pen, and everything is now temporarily, is some weird tube-like world, and then suddenly it changes to something else. Uh, anyone that knows me really well knows that my brain is very, very active, and I make strange word associations and strange situational associations all the time. It's constant. Uh, my humor is is odd. Anyone that knows me knows that I, they, they could expect something strange to come out of my mouth at any time. Um, you know, uh, we're trying to find parking, and I say, you know, oh, well, I guess we're the king of par. Uh, someone's trying to find aspirin, and I say, well, you, do you need some print for your ass? Uh, just stupid shit, you know? Uh, uh, if you look at my my uh, uh, my Vine uh, profile and stuff, you'll you'll find a lot of my more silly sides of things. I've, I've done a bit of it here on YouTube, but uh, maybe I should do it a little bit more, but... Um, you know, just silly associations, and it's what makes me good at writing music. It's, um, I mean, it makes me really good at coming up with ideas on the fly. I can scat like nobody's business, uh, and I don't mean, uh, shit, you know. I mean, you know, musical scat, uh, musical improv. I do a really, really good job at it. I, I can do things that I've never met anyone else that's able to do it. You know, and that sounds like it's bragging, but I don't, I don't say things like that about myself lightly. I really mean it. Um, <laughs> you know, I am really good at that kind of thing. Um, which leads me to the other question that Backslasher had was, okay, well, uh, Backslasher said, if you had to write a blueprint for your life, given the knowledge you have now from birth to death, what resources would you have made available to your other self that you would have enjoyed take, and taken the most advantage of and been able to take the most advantage of life with? Um, that's a good question. Um, the primary thing would have been <laughs> to be raised by more than my television and more than my grandmother stating that I'm stupid and that I am incapable of, of doing basic things like, you know, making the house look nice, you know, doing normal things, normal chores, you know, uh, cooking, learning how to cook, learning any important life lessons, socializing, any of that, you know. It would have been nice to have that kind of thing instead of basically being raised by my tele the, the television. Not my television, it was the television. Um, 
the biggest life lesson, the biggest thing that I, I wish I would have been taught is that if you have this goal, you need to do this much work to get to it. And you have to do the work. There's no getting out of it. There's no cheating. There, there's nothing you can do other than doing that work. That's the, those are, that's the lesson I wish I would have been taught instead of being taught that, well, if you can't do it perfect the first time, uh, give up because you're too stupid. That would have been nice. And I mentioned my grandmother. The, well, the, my mother would basically just parrot whatever my grandmother would say. The, the main tyrant was my grandmother. My mother was just trying to keep the peace. My mother was trying to do the best she could. I mean, I speak negatively about her, but, you know, she she tried. She really tried. Whether my grandmother did or not, I don't know, but my grandmother was adopted at nine to be a work slave, literally. So you can imagine some of the shit that she had went through. Um, but, yeah, I, I, if I would have been actually taught important life lessons and allowed to make mistakes allowed to fail at something once in a while instead of well you know I see you're struggling here let me take take it take it over so you don't have to fail at anything you know I uh, yeah I, I wish I, I I think I would have turned out much better if that would have been the case um, you know, I, I, I've been like I'm also I've been writing music since I was six um, I wish there could have been something done where something that could have coddled the music writing element, coddled the creative part of me. But that never really happened. I mean, I was allowed to, I, I could play the organ anytime I wanted, you know. Um, for the little story behind that, um, my mother and grandmother had been taking uh, organ uh, lessons, uh, keyboard lessons for, uh, I don't know, almost a year or something. And, uh, I went and sat down at the, the the organ and played what they were trying to work on for months and months. Just the first time, I just sat down and started playing it. So they were just like, "Okay, well, <laughs> this seems to be uh, the instrument for you." So you know, they let me play it, you know, however long I wanted. And then that was that was a good thing. That was that's like the only <laughs> the only real positive thing about my upbringing is that I was able to to do that. Um, I just wish there would have been some way that I, c I could have been introduced to these people or these people that could have maybe brought that to a new, a higher level, a, a larger level. I wish this video wasn't choppy. I'm sorry it's kind of choppy, so. Or at least it is while I'm recording it. Maybe it won't be when, I, when it gets played back, but. Um... You know, so it's just, yeah, how, state in another way, what would you have thrown at yourself as you grew up, and how could that have shaped you differently? If things had only been a little different, yeah, the things I've just mentioned, still the same thing. It's, it's you know, being taught important life lessons at an early age, instead of having to learn them after I turn 18, you know? Um, being allowed to have a childhood. Um, yeah, that that those those things would have been nice. That that would have been very nice. That would have. I could have excelled in any of the areas that I, that, I mean. I can't know what areas I would have excelled had I been raised differently. I have no idea what areas I would have excelled. I mean, I have the genes that I do, but there, there's I can't I can't know what would have been if if you know I had some good creative math skills in the earlier like around second grade and stuff, and then. I wasn't able to excel there. That would have been neat to be able to have excelled back at that age when I really had the interest in going further into math. Um, you know, I wanted to know about algebra. I wanted, to, you know, I wanted to know more stuff because the stuff we were doing is just like, well, why do we keep doing this? This, yeah, I get it. I get it. Let's move on. 
You know, there are, there are some other subjects that were kind of that way. Math was the main one for me in that area. And then I just started losing interest later on by the time, you know, I reached uh, j junior uh, middle school. Um, it's funny. It's j I, I went just as they switched to calling it middle school. Just the year prior, it was always called junior high. Um, anyway, uh, you know, th those, that would have been nice. But, you know, let's see, as it's, as it's asked on the bottom, so as it is today, what would be a close to perfect life for you? Um, being uh, independent, being, being able to do something that brings in a decent amount of money doing doing something that that uses the creative part of my thinking to do that to achieve that um and living around friends and being able to travel and visit different friends that are all over the world that would be my the perfect life for me but you know um being able to being able to be a part of the music industry would be another addition to what would be the perfect life for me but you know 